Hey folks, you see me bring this thing in, that only means Austin's coming out and he's, uh, tomorrow we're going to start uh, blitzing onto this thing. I think what I would really like to do is get the four bar into the rear so that I can, uh, so the car's properly mobile. I know the last time we moved that people were talking about how the diff is kind of doing a little dance and because we don't have the original powertrain in there, that's what it does because it's a torque tube car, so there's nothing stopping it from going forward and side to side there's a pan hard in there but that's about it so i have a triangulated or i have a four bar kit i want to see if i can make it work and if that doesn't jive well then i'm just going to do a cross link like a two link and we'll just reuse the pan hard and the coils now that i talk about that that might be the better way to go but we'll see tomorrow when we lift it up have a look we might do that or we'll work on something else, but I'm thinking uh, I'd like to get that. This is a diff out of that van. I'd like to get it in there, but uh, eh, we'll see how we'll see how tomorrow goes and figure out what we're going to do. Anyways, we'll kind of wait for Austin to come out and then uh, hopefully the car will be all thawed out. <laughs> and uh, we can start booking away out of here. Austin? How do you enjoy the hoist? A lot better than a scissor? Way better. <laughs> so we're kind of short on time tonight, so we're not doing a heck of a lot. But we did measure up, and folks were right, that van diff is way, way too wide. So I'm going to go dig around in our diff pile tomorrow, see if I have a, a full-size truck diff or something. I really want to keep the same bolt pattern on the car, so I'm going to shoot for that. Anyways, tonight our plan is we're going to get the transmission mount uh replaced and in he's just pulling the old one off right now we got the motor actually bolted in where i think that was where we last were was playing with it the last time and then we'll work our way around up to starting to assemble the motors the next thing um he's just pulling a few bolts off we're getting rid of the old um transmission mount from the buick and then i found a transmission mount i thought it was spare but i guess i bought it for austin <laughs> <laughs> it's over here somewhere in my parts area that I have to find. I remember seeing it, even though I don't know where I've placed everything already. All right, I'm going to go look for it, and then we'll be right back. All right. Seeing how it was right in front of me the whole darn time. Anyways, we got a simple mount. It's a two button style, which I think is actually super close to the way the Buicks is. Not get it loose? Nope. Nobody wants to wrap their knuckles, so I was trying to pawn that off, but I guess guess it's my turn. <laughs> All right, we'll get that thing off and then uh, hopefully we can get this thing on and then start assembling the motor. out of time but we got transmission mount in we kind of hodge the holes out that you've seen we still have to bolt this thing up good we just have a temporarily oh 
Well, Austin's just about got his side on there. Nah, whatever. We got to do there, throw two more bolts in. We still got to do the torque converter bolt, but that'll get us everything underneath here. Well, for the most part. We can't button up anything on here, but we still want to make an attempt to actually fire this thing up. That would be a, a goal. Wanted to get the diff in, but until I find another one, I think we're going to settle to just see if we can fire this sucker up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Till the next time he comes out, and then we'll have the car in. And we'll continue plugging away at her. All right, we did all that. We got the car in, because we are back on it. I was a little under the weather and not able to help Austin too much last time. But goal is, maybe tonight, I think that's our goal. It'll be, uh, see if we can get at the fire. That's what we're gonna hope for. We're shooting for a first startup, and then I think, because you're here all day tomorrow, right? Then tomorrow I plan to, would like to try to see if we can get that four bar that I had dug out of the shed and see if we can get a differential in the back. Uh, I was at a swap meet this spring and I found a universal four bar kit, which I don't really know what it's for, but we're gonna modify it and make it work in the back here. Uh, the diff you see me grab before is just a little two wheel drive S10 diff, but um, should be more than enough for it. It's gonna be super narrow, but my plan is that we're gonna do wheel adapters and put it back to five on five so you can keep all of the stock wheels in the car. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we'll have to visit the fuel tank, but I think all we're gonna do is get the carburetor on, get the distributor wires on it, and we're just gonna give it a little squirt of gas and just did it with the bump box and just see if it fires. That's kind of where we're at, because we don't have the transmission's not fully mounted. We don't have the torque converter in, but there's no fluid in it and yada, yada, yada. We need the old torque tube set up, everything gone, so we can actually like put a drive shaft into it. So, anywho, uh, Austin, the other time he was out, he basically, we don't got the room and I'm not about to hack this thing all up just to put a fuel pump on. So we just welded this up. We pulled the rod out. We're just gonna run an electric pump on it. I don't know if our plug discs are tight. We'll have to check that. And then I guess next thing we do, we're going to just plug some vacuum lines and then uh, we'll go grab a distributor. We'll figure out number one, top dead. And uh, yeah, go from there. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's weird. Our ground is good. It's gotta be that power. Okey doke. Well, let's. Oh, unless I'm on the wrong wire for the starter. That could be. And then you have a peak C underneath there. This one? Yeah. Still no oil. What the heck? Sure, this one just out of, out of blue. Oh, I got the wrong one on there. Okay. Got it. Black wire. Green goes to. Green goes to coil. I keep forgetting that. I should label these. <laughs> All right. Now try the other one. The white one? I think the other one. That's the one's the starter, yeah. Cool. Okay. All right, you get on the other side, stick your finger in that hole. In where? That spark plug you took out. In the hole? You bet. Now I'm gonna bump it, and when you feel a whole lot of compression, you let me know. Yeah. Right there? No. There. There. Yep, yeah, right there. Right there. That last one didn't sound great. Let's have a look. See this mark? We just gotta push it back to zero. That little, that line right there. Here, I'll move it now. You want it at zero? Yes. Or zero. That's zero right there? Yeah. That's close enough. All right. Um, see that bolt and screw in the back where your distributor goes into? Or is gonna go into? Right here. We'll take these out. You can put them in after. Get that stuff off of there. This thing. Uh, Peel that out. So the way this is going to go, and it might be a little tricky, but what we're trying to do is point this at the spark plug that you took out. That's the idea. So this goes down the hole. Where's that gasket? We're going to have to get you a new one. We only had that. This one wasn't in the greatest of shape there. Because it'll leak like a sieve if we don't put that in there. Anyways, with any luck, you'll get this first try. If not, there's a whole lot of suckiness that goes with this okay try to drop that down and it should go kind of like that way in like you want this thing pointing off the side and then oh but hold on turn this i want this thing to be pointed at number one and it doesn't, it's got to go all the way down, see how it doesn't want to go down, so that means this thing always turns us a slightest little bit. Well, I think it's like going on something right here, so it's not going down. Yeah, is that? Nope, still not. Oh. We're going to go up, feel this thing, you'll see what I mean, how it kind of, okay, and I'll give it a little bit of a turn, half a turn, like a click. All right, I went down. This is the sucky part. I want this to point to that one. Otherwise, this becomes your number one plug. You won't know what I mean, but we're gonna lift up and we're gonna move just a tooth. We gotta do hop this thing all the way around. So now turn it my way, just a tooth. You basically have to keep bumping this thing till it goes all the way around. So then we go up again. Okay, get another, what we're doing. Get a little greedy in the back of it. There we go. Do that again. Tell I can do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Need two hands for this. 
Need two hands. All right, I get in there. There we go. There we go. Give that a little half turn. Perfect. Can you turn it? No. Okay. Oh, not too much. Figure out roughly where we were. Gonna... We'll know we did it wrong. See how that didn't bottom out in the bottom there? So now I'm just gonna go up, go back a little bit. The other way to do it is you'd put the screwdriver in there. And... There we go. Okay. That's too much. You gotta go back half a tooth. There we go. And the other way you'd have to. Not too much. Let's keep it back right there. There we go. There we go. It's pretty much every gear tooth on there. We gotta go just one jump. You know, that was too much, I think. Come back half a tooth. There we go. There we go. Go back again. Can't get greedier than one tooth. <laughs> how much one more? Is. There we go. That's where we want to be. Oh. I'll get this started because we got to put this back in. Let's make sure that this thing doesn't pop out when we crank it over. So that way, technically, we are top dead center on number one. Like that's where it wants to fire and start. So that's why we did the old finger in the spark plug hole. And either we're right or we're 180 out. This thing's supposed to be pointing like we'll have to do the like turn the motor over, whatever it is. It, this happens that it, it goes 180 degrees out. We'll find out because if it just shoots fire out of the curb, then we know we probably have it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple bad plug wires on here, so Austin went to one of the sheds, grabbed us some spark plug wires. So we have what we think are good plug wires, we'll find out. And this cap is not the greatest, so he said there was another cap and a distributor there, so I told him just to grab the cap, because if it's in better shape than this one, we'll use it. This one's like, probably the cap should be replaced. You could probably sand it and clean it up, but eh. If we got a nicer one, we'll just use that one. This one then, who knows how bad and pitted that stuff is, so. Anyways, I'm gonna wait for him to find that, come back, we're gonna throw the cap on and then I'm gonna walk him through, you know, the old small block timing, whatever, I can't remember what it is. One, oh, people will make fun of me, I should know that. Anyways, the timing's on the intake, so we'll just follow that. <laughs> uh, we'll check that all our plug wires are good. And then uh, a cap, a bunch of these vacuum leaks that we're gonna have. And uh, then we'll be ready to test fire it. See how she fires up. Pretty much like just foil tape everything just for now, just so we have no vacuum leaks anywhere. motors are it starts one three five seven this is all evens starting two four six eight so we start at and the, and the distributor turns clockwise and we know number one where we pointed it remember that part yes no. yeah <laughs>
right, sending Austin off to get another distributor. The uh, the one we're trying to use, I guess, is a no bueno. Bet you the module's bad or something in it. Uh, so we're just gonna quickly swap that out. That way he can get a get a first run. But something definitely doesn't sound happy down there. I don't know if the starter's not. Mind you, I should check that. Maybe Austin didn't get it quite tight enough. We'll check that really quick and uh, we'll quickly swap out the distributor and then we'll bring it back. starter box and uh, what are we doing? Turn the ignition on. Perfect. Now crank it. I want to see if it gets some spark. <laughs> yeah, definitely have spark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn your ignition off. A distributor definitely solves our problems. Sounded better too. <laughs> and you can smell it. We will fill her back up. Hopefully it idles. Oops, there we go. Out of everywhere. Perfect. All right, boy. Give her. Not gonna go anywhere, so. Need your ignition on? Got Perfect. Me. I'll try to keep it running. That's actually pretty, not bad. I don't know if we need timing more somewhere else. Give it a shot. <laughs> That's pretty good. We'll just keep pushing our luck. Give it a little more. Give it a little more. A little bit of fuel. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Turn up the watch choke. One more time. Weird. Alright. Hold on. I think we need some more. Some more fuel already. That makes sense. I don't know if possible. There you go. All right. Good. <laughs> I think it needs just a tune up, some new plugs and some stuff like that, but. It runs. <laughs> One step closer.
Okay, new day. We're picking parts off. Well, the goal, what is your goal? Pulling diff out, right? Yep. <laughs> so he's gonna pull track bar. We're gonna reuse the coil springs, shocks, track bar, try to salvage as much of the e-brake stuff if it's loose to reuse. And then uh, we were gonna go with the S10 diff. I had this two wheel drive S10. Turns out it's just way too narrow. It's uh, the inner measurement is just like a half inch on either side of the, uh, the frame rails. And I thought it wouldn't be a big deal. I would just put some wheel spacers with the adapters to go from the small five to the big five. But we'd have to have like over three inch wheel spacers on either side to get it back to factory. So I found a four by four one and it's wider like a good width and with the wheel spacers it might make the wheel a little bit wider but it's the the best compromise we got so gonna go plug the tractor in we're gonna go get that going later we'll swap this diff out for that particular one and then uh, at least then we can have a proper diff to pop back in well a proper width anyways we're gonna let him keep pulling all the parts off Probably get some stands to pop under there for now, and then uh, we'll bring you we'll bring you back when we're ready here. All right, we brought in our other diff. This is like a 4x4 S10. 
So basically we're starting over. The plan is we're just pulling the sway bar off right now. You basically gotta hit it sideways, make it turn. Yeah. We're gonna take the sway bar off. We're gonna pull these, we're getting to cut these mounts off. That way we can get the, uh, the diff out or the uh, drive shaft off. Then we'll turn it and then we'll kind of lay it in here and get it ready to figure out where it's got to go in its new life. He, uh, before he cut off the spring perch mounts, so we're basically going to reuse these. That's the idea. When we're, uh, we'll lift the car up and we're going to try to center up the diff, what we think is good. And then uh, we'll basically tack those on with the springs and it'll sort of suspend things in place. We don't know if we'll get the pinion angle 100% yet, but uh, the idea is just to at least get it in intact, and then we can, we'll figure it out later. Just due to the amount of time that he's out, I want to at least get it in there and make a couple mounts really quick and just try to get everything just to, to sit in the car so we can roll it back out again on its own, uh, on its own four wheels would be ideal. Alright, we got our bench done. It's uh, well, we pretty, have it all nice and level anyways. It's uh, a little bigger, but I'm happy with that. That's going to be my, my main workbench that I kind of use farting around with. I still, it's not done yet is in the sense that I want to put a receiver hitch either in the middle or off to the side or something like that that I can boom up, uh, put a vise in or other things like that if I want, but I can take it out and have a nice flat bench if I'm welding something together. I can clamp it down and do whatever I need to do. Anyways, uh, that one's done. This one I'll probably get another plate, a smaller plate, put it on there just to make it a little bigger. More as just a second rolly bench kind of dealio. Uh, Austin is just taking the drive shaft off. He's like knocked off the original mounts off of this thing. That thing's about ready to pop off. We'll leave it down before you pop it and lose the caps. I'll, uh, we'll put a pry bar on it. <laughs> Just moving it so I can. <laughs> oh, get the last one. Okay. So once he's done that, then we're going to lift the car. We're going to kind of place that thing around where it's supposed to be. I think we'll kind of temporarily just like zap those mounts on it. So it kind of floats or not. We'll maybe use the drive. So we'll use the uh, forklift, that's the plan. And then hold the diff in place and then we'll just see how the four bars, if I can just use them right out of the box or what we gotta do. Should probably get the forklift over here because he's gonna have to do some cleanup on top. We have to grind and clean. We might mock up, figure out where we gotta clean the diff up first. But uh, we'll see where these bars go and if it has a couple universal mounts and if some of this stuff will just work or we're going to start cutting stuff on the table.
All right, so we've got the diff in. Uh, we kind of jimmy rigged our stand just so we can basically adjust and get our diff where it is. We never measured where it is, so we've been just kind of eyeballing it and seeing what looks good, and that's what we're going with. The four bar kit I have is just some universal one that I got at swap meet. It's missing one of the bushings, so I'm gonna have to make a bushing for it. Uh, the lower link looks like it's gonna work fine. It'll kind of come into the motor mount there and off to the back. We'll use these so we could actually somehow jimmy rig a shock into this system because the old one had that, that knee action one and we're not using that. The upper bar, I'm not too happy the way that one's going. Like that one's here. Probably switch these side to side or something just so these sit a little level, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna have to go on top of the frame. Uh, the way the mount is, is it's supposed to like kind of go to the edge of the frame, but like we could shorten the link, but I don't know if I, I don't really want to attach it to the, uh, uh, the structure like this X frame, because it's really that tubing is not very strong. We might shorten this arm and actually attach it into this zone. But uh, for now, we'll just zap it up there. We're just going to just do a quick, like a test fit because it's getting near the end of Austin's uh, time out. And I want to at least get the car on the ground and see what she looks like here. Uh, yeah, the plan. Austin right now is just scraping away a little bit of the undercoating because if we hit it with the, the grinder, we're just not going to, we're not going to win at that very well. It'll plug that up in a hurry. So, yeah, not too far, Austin. We're only going to go from here to here. I just need a little bit more of this stuff here, kind of a quick little scrape and a bop, and then we can zap on our lower mounts. All right. Well, once he's done that, we'll grind her up, and then uh, kind of just tack everything and hopefully get some weight on the car and see what it looks like. The tires themselves are not great. I'm really hoping they'll actually hold some air, so at least we can uh, see what it looks like on the ground.
All right, folks, that is where we are at. So, didn't do too bad for, what, a day and a bit? Austin got his motor running. We got the four bar. The four bar is in, but it's not permanently mounted. It's kind of, have a, I think we got to shorten the upper links. I don't like where the mount is. The bars are sitting nice and parallel, so the lowers are fine. And those are going to be, uh, they're going to double as some shock mounts. Why don't you demonstrate how clearly the uh, old shocks were working quite well uh, before. Yeah, see, it's got a little bounce that just keeps going there. <laughs> the upper mounts actually look good on top of the frame, but I want to design something a little bit different. And everything's tacked. I'm pretty happy. I think the wheel's like good where it is. Being a four bar, it's not going to move. So I'm just used to the new, the, the older cars, the wheel set a little bit more forward, but I think it's totally fine. So at least we got the right diff in there now. And uh, she's a... Uh, Good to go. Well, we're, we're a couple steps closer to driving. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I think that is where we are going to leave this one. Uh, as always, I want to thank you all for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. Later. Later. <laughs>